Cars is one of the most predictable Pixar movies ever produced, yet at the same time veers in such an unpredictable direction, it kind of amazes me. It almost feels like a magic trick actually, that's how much it surprised me at the time. I remember exactly what I was thinking the first time I saw this movie. I watched the opening and see how awful Lightning McQueen is to everyone, and see how his pit crew quits on him, and how he has no friends. And I've got this movie pegged. Simple redemption story. Owen Wilson learns some humility, small time values, gains a group of friends, yada yada yada, wins the big race in the end. Bada bing, bada boom. Wait a minute, what's this? A story about the economics of urban development and highway infrastructure? What? What? I thought this was a movie about silly talking cars. You've tricked me, Pixar. You've tricked me into caring about the fictional town of Radiator Springs. The best thing that Cars does as a film is take a look at Radiator Springs at a macro level, giving the town itself a story arc and not just be the catalyst for Lightning McQueen's redemption. Every story like this one needs a group of characters to show the hero the way, correct his or her mistakes, and provide an outlet to redeem him or herself. It's an essential part of any redemption story. The danger is that they can sometimes become plot devices instead of actual characters. Thankfully, Cars approaches this in a much more intelligent way, building a parallel community development story alongside Lightning McQueen's personal one. And it's not presented as being so simple as the town needing a hero to swoop in and fix all their problems for them. Paving the road isn't just about having a shiny new road, there's an underlying self-esteem issue there. This is a town that is used to being rejected, used to scaring off every visitor who wanders in. When McQueen finishes the first section of road, the first thing Luigi and Guido do is look at their own store and decide they want to spruce things up. They start to buy into the idea that, yeah, maybe theirs is a town worth fixing. And they fix it themselves. Now I'll be frank, the plot of Cars runs dangerously close to Hallmark Channel territory, telling the story of an arrogant city boy who needs to learn some small time values and settle down with a nice girl. Or a car, whatever. Letting Sally tell the story of Route 66, Interstate 40, and Radiator Springs adds extra context and makes the setting feel like a real-world location with an actual history. You start rooting for the town. Seeing it refurbished and relit in its fluorescent lights is quite beautiful and easily the biggest feel-good part of the film. Hey, you can't go wrong with a movie with Shaboom in it, right? Now as much as I praise the Radiator Springs part of the story, this is actually a movie about Lightning McQueen himself, so we should probably focus more on him. Lord knows that's what he would want. I admit, I find myself a little underwhelmed by his journey overall, but I have trouble pinpointing exactly why. Because it's not like Cars does anything particularly badly with his character progression. The opening race scene tells us everything we need to know about him. The way he hot dogs it and plays to the crowd, how he refuses to listen to his pit crew's advice, how he hogs all the credit and puts in the bare minimum effort for his sponsor. Casting Owen Wilson for this role is pretty much perfect. He's excellent at hitting that blend of smugness, sarcasm, and extreme self-confidence that is needed for this character. The thing is, and I can't believe I'm making this observation, but I feel like this is one of those rare examples where they might have foreshadowed things a little too much. While all these aspects quickly establish his character, they also heavily telegraph where things are going. You immediately know it's a redemption story, meaning we'll most certainly see a less obnoxious version of him by the end. His pit crew leaving him and his admission that he has no friends makes it evident that he will most certainly have a new smiling pit crew by the conclusion. They set up the main antagonist early on as a dirty racer, who bumps other cars off the road. All these elements generally work overall and don't contain plot holes, there's just a layer of predictability that makes the story feel less fresh than it should. I think if there were other plot threads going on, I probably wouldn't have noticed this as much. In general, I do like the motifs about tires and rust that they establish early on. Like, I absolutely love the idea that Lightning McQueen is a spokesperson for a medicated bumper ointment. It's about the most embarrassing kind of product that a car could endorse. But it also ties in nicely with Mater, establishing early on how uncomfortable McQueen is around rusty cars. They also make a big deal about McQueen not getting new tires during the pit stop, which explains why Luigi and Guido play such big roles in the story. Guido gets the important job of the super quick tire change at the end, so Pixar gives these two more face time than the rest of the secondary characters. They want to make it clear that, without tires, a racer is basically nothing. It does seem strange how, in a movie about fast racing cars and amazing scenery and locations, they would chain themselves to having to fix a road. There is an instinct to go fast, but the story requires us to go as slow as possible. If the goal was to make me empathize with McQueen during these scenes, they have certainly succeeded. I am ready for something new. To their credit, they're pretty good about letting McQueen go on random field trips throughout the story, to break up that exciting road paving action. 
Doc challenges him to a race, Mater takes him out tractor tipping, and Sally takes him out on a drive through the desert. Sally is a solid character overall, but she does suffer a little bit from being stuck in a traditional romantic comedy. As a character by herself, Sally is a great addition to the film. She's smart, conscientious, and the voice of reason in the town. She has a deep love for Radiator Springs, and is still young and optimistic enough to push everyone towards change. Unfortunately, she's trapped in that romantic comedy, which is a real shame for a cool character like her. They do the old story of the love interest who cannot stand the hero at first, but eventually he was won over because of reasons. The whole romance follows a very predictable pattern, and is, in general, kind of dull. I'm not sure if I'm just biased because their car is in love and I'd prefer them to be cute little robots like in Wally, but I find myself not caring about them as a couple. The film gives way more face time to developing the McQueen and Mater friendship, making the actual romance feel relatively unimportant. I probably shouldn't knock this storyline too much, however, because it does lead to a gorgeous montage of the two cars racing down Route 66. This scene is absolutely breathtaking, one of the scenes that reminds you how far the studio had come since the original Toy Story. I like how it syncs up with the montage at the beginning of the film, as Mac drives the highway to California. It goes from being a celebration of making good time on the highway, to one about having a good time on Route 66. Moving on, it's probably time we talk about that tow truck that seems to get so much attention. Mater was the breakout character from the first Cars movie, but also has the most detractors. Maybe it's just the Leary the Cable Guy thing, maybe it's because he's the obvious comic relief. I personally like Mater. I think the hate went way too far on him. The middle section of this movie has a lot of unhappy or serious characters in it. Lightning McQueen is miserable paving the road, Sheriff is stuck watching him, Doc is being his crotchety self. Mater adds some much needed levity to the mix, always trying to look at the bright side or just kind of hanging around and saying charming, rustic things. He doesn't really move the plot that much, aside from teaching McQueen how to drive backwards in the ways of the town. That being said, he is a major player, possibly the key player, in Lightning McQueen learning to stop being such a cynical putz. For as much bravado and self-confidence that he projects, McQueen is essentially a lonely soul, a celebrity surrounded by thousands of admirers but no actual friends. Mater proclaiming that he is his best friend so easily and so readily is bound to do something to McQueen. Their friendship is developed nicely in the story, with most of it being through random chit-chat. Their game of tractor tipping is one of the more memorable moments in the movie, leading to an exciting chase scene. As gimmicky as Mater might be as a character, I think he's executed really well overall and fits perfectly with the themes established. I am not surprised in the least that they let him take center stage in Cars 2. Doc Hudson is another great addition to the movie, with Paul Newman giving a superb performance in one of his final roles. He really brings a lot of maturity and gravitas to the role. He gives the character credibility. You really believe him when he's giving those words of wisdom. They do a nice job foreshadowing his real identity during the court scene, with Doc already knowing all about race cars and initially sending McQueen away. I also like the psychological angle that, after suffering such a terrible crash, Doc would take up the field of medicine. It feels like a pretty big coincidence that the Hudson Hornet is hiding out in this random town, but I feel like the story needs someone who can speak from actual experience. He becomes the father figure in the film, teaching McQueen important life lessons and skills he can use in the future. It does feel a little like those sports movies sometimes though, where the hero learns a skill that will obviously be used in the finale. The drifting left turn is basically Lightning McQueen's crane kick. I feel like the backwards driving thing is handled better overall since it doubles as a joke. Speaking of which, the jokes are pretty solid across the board, although I wouldn't classify it as one of the funniest Pixar's. Mater brings a lot of the fun, such as in the aforementioned tractor tipping scene, and various other town residents contribute as well. A lot of them are pretty one-dimensional, but the shtick they have generally work. We've got lowrider jokes, hippie drug jokes, Italian jokes, military jokes, etc, etc. The car selection designs are all hilarious and perfect. Yeah, they're all caricatures when it comes down to it, but as a Greek chorus, they do the job well enough. The tone of Cars is kind of a surprising one in general, because they ended up putting together a very down-to-earth and easy-going film. When you look at the design of the characters, you expect something a little wackier and fast-paced than this. Maybe this is an unfair observation on my part, but I feel like their designs are inherently goofy with those big ol' windshield eyes. It clashes a bit with the more serious tone. I feel like it's hard to act out dramatic scenes when all the actors are wearing clown makeup. 
I read a psychological study about how humans more easily empathize with things that have faces, and I wonder if that's affecting me here. Yeah, the characters in Cars have faces, but they're untraditional ones, with the mouths at the end of their hoods. A lot of the character acting has to be done through the eyes. Which isn't horrible, I guess, since the eyes are the windows to the soul and all, but it gives the animators a smaller set of expressions they can play with. Mater is the best animated character in this, since his design with his teeth and giant eyes and toe hook give them a lot to play with. I imagine it was an unusually huge challenge for the character animators to make all the expressions feel unique and emotive. In general, I feel like the designs are better suited to a strict comedy overall. The direction they took for Cars 2, which is much more comedy focused, makes a lot of sense to me. Getting back to the story again, the final race ends up being an exciting one, despite all my grumblings about predictability. All the major themes show up in the end. Lightning McQueen has a new pit crew comprised of his new friends. He opts for the tire change. He drives backwards. He does the skidding left turn. The villain continues to drive dirty. And in the end, Lightning McQueen understands that fame is fleeting and winning is not everything. He ends up rejecting Dinoco's offer and sticks by the people who believed in him. Lightning McQueen sets up his headquarters in Radiator Springs, helping bring in new traffic to the community. Also, Mater gets to ride in a helicopter. Hooray is all around. As inevitable as some of this might seem, even I have to admit there is probably no other way this movie could have ended. A character so obsessed with success and prestige at the beginning can't win the big race in the end. They just can't. The redemption arc has to be about something bigger. Pixar ended up putting together a good, solid ending to the story engine they had built. Overall, Cars takes a fairly traditional story concept and executes it in a very thoughtful way. I think thoughtful is the word I would use to describe this film as a whole. I don't necessarily want to suggest that because the core story type is traditional, that it inherently makes it inferior to others. I mean, a lot of other Pixar's movies also are takeoffs on familiar ideas. A Bug's Life is basically a western. Finding Nemo turns into a road trip movie. Brave is about a rebellious member of royalty. The Good Dinosaur is a coming of age story. You could knock almost every Pixar movie if you wanted to look at it that way. Cars is a thoughtful film because it takes that familiar framework and incorporates its themes in a very deliberate way. It doesn't just yada 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 all the character progression and hopefully buy the change in the end. No, it sets things up in advance and follows through on them. It actually shows its work. We can see how Radiator Springs has changed Lightning McQueen, as well as how Lightning McQueen has changed Radiator Springs. It's not exactly Shakespeare or anything, but give them a break. They're talking cars. If talking cars can put together a film this fun and this thoughtful, then I am totally fine with talking cars. Ka-chow.